That's where all the power comes from. So if you really got something to show or believe. <laughs> Caught my ass picking the fucking ice picks out of my nose. Just, just fucking freezing. Are we really gonna do this fucking interview outside? How long are we gonna be able to do it for? I was just trying to get something from the back and I got visceral pain. <laughs> I thought I had some sort of something wrong with my stomach, but I was just because my body temperature dropped five degrees within two seconds and my fucking organs shriveled up <laughs> to try to store the heat. Or believe. I hope you don't forget in love and feeling because it's so easy to change. But what I did, I was the best, but when you're trying to prevent people, let's say, you know, before the pandemic, everybody was up and down, going, coming and going, and, you know, no everywhere, this and that. My, you know, I, line of work was to make sure you don't enter a contaminated hospital room, right? So there's procedures you gotta follow, like, you quote me on this. <laughs> You know, viruses and germs do not care about red tape or bureaucratic decisions. They don't. Viruses is just going to expand, grow, and, and, and you have to have this specialized to even, or the consciousness so to look at those things, right? But when you have that consciousness and you can see those things and you can, you're trying to prevent people to like, Dude, this is not how you do it. You're gonna get contaminated. You're gonna cross contaminate this and that. And there's a thousand people wrong doing the wrong thing, and you're the only one that knows how to do the right thing and prevent everything. You become sacrificed. I got put in that situation, even and and, and, and that wore me down because, I mean, I certified really a woman. Department of Defense Hospital, and it was the first hospital to receive and dispose highly contagious viruses. I did that. And it was a lot of sacrifice because some people didn't even believe in doing the right thing. So I'm like, oh my God, you know, oh, how can you, and then the pandemic happened. And then they were like, oh, Victor was right. <laughs> when, I, when that was happening, I, I, I feel like I was like Michael Jordan sitting on a bench in a championship that can take a toll on somebody because you're not like should i be helping or am i glad for not being there and still being alive but then you know what we talked about it's really hard when you're trying to tell people hey you're doing something wrong this is the right way and then boom something happens and then everybody all of a sudden like oh my god you know we were doing it wrong, and then some people are saying, oh, now we like, we have all these heroes, but hey, the heroes, no one really talks about those heroes. The real heroes, the guys that are trying to prevent everything before it happened. No one should be, again, incarcerated or be a criminal for a plan that heals people and and it's already proven with scientific research and everything i mean what are we waiting on downtown where i grew up i'm five minutes away from new mexico i mean if i want to go visit my friend come back and, or something and, and for some reason like, i got traumatic brain injuries i forget a lot of things and you know i all of a sudden like they say, or not even just like smelling like cannabis can get you in jail or trouble or whatever at the discretion of a police officer. So, so you know, why? What do you think that we can accomplish tomorrow at the meeting by speaking there? 
to start creating consciousness, to change the rhetoric, the story, to speak the truth, to, I mean, it's, it's been a long, 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 long time, guys, decades. And uh, I think it's time to redemption. Open the dialogue again. Yeah, to end all this stuff. Because El Paso is a veteran friendly community, okay? We, we support our veterans, we love our veterans, we help. Are there gonna be a lot of veterans there tomorrow? Did you ask them all to come out? I don't, I don't even, I don't think so. I don't even think people even know that there's gonna be like... Oh my God. Yeah. We should be getting as many veterans as we can together to come out and support. Let's, let's text veterans. With numbers. Right? Yeah. So easy to change and get swayed, get wrapped up in the games. This this matrix ain't real. Hey hey hey. Look at I'm just trying to unplug. You're the only one that I love, but I had to leave 'cause I'm sorry. And I do agree with Kelso set the tone with regards to speaking with one voice. Whether it's this, whether it's the code of conduct, whether it's, you know, um, you know, y'all show some leadership in those areas. And so, yeah, I agree with your comment. All right, thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Mayor Pro Tem, Thank you, Dean. Thank you, sir. First of all, thank you, Chief Macias, for the. Good afternoon. You have three minutes. Good afternoon. Starlight Projects Foundation is a federally licensed uh, charitable organization and is here in El Paso today because we got called out by the veterans, constituents of this community, to address the issues of social and economic equity that are surmounting and affecting our local communities from thriving and becoming successful and self-sufficient. By definition, a franchise is an authorization granted by a government to a company or an individual or a group, enabling them to carry out specific activities. These communities, often formerly known as minority groups, have quite frankly become the majority. And now these areas have come to be known as opportunity zones in the world of ordinance and finance and with the keyword compliance attached to them. It's important to recognize the differences and the nuances in language when addressing these subsets which in reality translate to real communities. Outside of the black and white of paper, minority as a label which we have been assigned needs to be addressed as disenfranchised communities we serve due to not lack of equal opportunity presented to these communities, but lack of social and economic equity planning involved in making these offers to them. What we're asking every local city government to do is really open a dialogue with its constituents, not only to listen, but to create a viable pathway or avenue like a yellow brick road to success. Success not just on paper and in black and white, but change with real results that are sustainable and holistic for the organization of humanity as a whole and as a society. Imagine equality being giving everyone a shoe making sure everyone gets a pair of shoes. But equity is making sure everyone gets the right type of shoe, making sure that that shoe fits and that everyone is comfy when they walk in it. What is the city of El Paso doing to address our or open dialogue with veterans and its constituents about cannabis legalization happening next door in our sister state of New Mexico? Well, we're very proud of the city for the great progress, and we're really excited about the Korean War Memorial. How are we addressing the issues that will come from the influx of cannabis to the region? Is there a plan in place to handle the nuances that will occur? Veterans will be severely affected by the daily commute. We're really excited, and there's a lot of new scientific data coming out with cannabis, even inhibiting COVID-19. How will the city continue to support our veterans through these difficult times? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is James Seema. Topic is veterans and cannabis. 
James Sima, good afternoon. You have three minutes. Hi, guys. I just wanted to introduce uh, one of the veteran constituents who's going to be speaking on behalf of his, one of his constituency. Good morning, City Council. Mr. Sima needs to be the speaker. I'm not sure which one of you is James Sima. He's James. I'm okay. James. But you need to speak, sir, since you si you're the one that signed up to speak. Okay, so my, one Thank of you. my understandings of the situation, if I can look at you because you're the one that understands it better than me, is right now there's a an issue regarding veterans receiving their medicine, which has to be brought from Austin, Texas. And if the medicine is not uh, able to be directly delivered to the veteran, if, they, if there's some six, in that 600 mile journey, if anything goes wrong, the veterans can't get their medicine. So we'd really like to see some licenses uh, going out through the social equity pathway locally so that the people can get their medicine, especially people that have served our country. And really, um, these issues aren't going away. When we don't address them, uh, what happens similar to other states is the black market just ends up taking over. And sometimes when we don't approach these problems early on, right now we have a great chance to approach this as a, as a community and use this, this tax revenue to support local initiatives not just for veterans, but for kids and for helping people foster entrepreneurship, building out labs and testing. We need a higher food quality right now across the nation, and we need people to explore some of the solutions that we have with regard to food. Personally, for me, as a uh, student of biology and medicine, I would really like to see cannabis be the key for us to looking at the plants as a source of medicine because they have so many less side effects, and plants in general have been vilified and crucified by the <clears throat> industries which dates back to Rockefeller and other big pharmaceutical uh, companies that get most of their medicine from and are financially tied to oil companies. So until we can rewind the science and figure out how we got so deeply in this mess where uh, you know a lot of us in our cities we have big empty gardens in our backyards and um, there's a lot of room for us to cultivate fresh healthy foods but some of the barriers in our compliance and legal legalization pathways for some of these ancient indigenous medicines are kind of not only blocking us from making all this tax money that we can use to build better schools, we can use to build um, a pathway for the state of Texas to really shine as the star that it is. This state has stood for guns to be maintained in terms of rights. In terms of other areas where our rights are being taken away, you know, this state is one that stands on the Constitution. In a time where our rights are under attack, we really need Texas to stand for veterans instead of vilifying them for smoking weed. So I'd love some support from you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the, you. the next speaker is Michael Castro. Mr. Castro's topic is cannabis decriminalization. Mr. Castro, you're if you press star six, you can unmute your telephone. You're on mute, sir. Star six, please, to unmute your telephone. Mr. Castro. Mr. Castro, you're still on mute. Star six will unmute your telephone. Michael Castro. Good afternoon, sir. You have three minutes. Can you hear me? Yes, you have three minutes, sir. Okay. Hi, good afternoon, City Council, Mayor. Good afternoon. Um, so again, you guys, what the people of El Paso are going to be asking for is, is El Paso City Council's help. And the reason we're coming to you guys for help, it's not only veterans who are at risk, but it's anyone over the age of 21 years of age who decides to come into New Mexico, Sunland Park, New Mexico, to be exact, or top it out, New Mexico, coming April 1st with a state ID, 21 years of age and older. All they have to do is walk into the dispensary and purchase, they can purchase up to two ounces of cannabis at any dispensary. They can purchase up to 800 milligrams of edibles at any dispensary, and they can purchase up to 16 grams of concentrate at any dispensary. So we have to realize that, again, you guys, we've been coming to you guys for the past two years, and honestly, we need your help. We're, go we're not gonna stop. You know, We're not gonna stop talking to you guys about how cannabis can help the city, how it's affecting the younger generation, how it's affecting our veterans, how it's affecting people right now in Texas or in El Paso, Texas, who have Texas medical cards. So 
So currently right now I'm sitting right here outside of my dispensary ultra house where I'm currently on a break smoking a joint here in New Mexico in Sunland Park, New Mexico, 100% legal. I'm not a criminal, you guys. So for anyone to be placed in handcuffs or given citations for exactly what uh, I can literally see UTEP from where I'm at right now. I'm literally looking at UTEP. So you guys have to understand that this is happening right next door and we need your help. You know, we can get statistical, we can get scientific on you guys, but really it's, it's, it's at, we're at a time now where the city itself needs to protect the people, right? You guys need to help us because state laws aren't going to help us, right? You guys need to help the state change, and that's really important. I hope you guys understand that, right? Um, city Council, we're not going to stop. We're going to keep coming to you guys. Again, there's two dispensaries that sit right here in Sunland Park, New Mexico. Coming April 1st, you guys, there's going to be over five dispensaries, recreational dispensaries that sit right here in Sunland Park, New Mexico. And it's probably going to be more than that because the amount of wheat is not, the amount of wheat that New Mexico can produce is not going to be enough for the people or for the demand that El Paso is going to bring itself. All right, do you guys realize that? El Paso market is going to completely, it's going to completely sell out the entire New Mexico, Sunland Park, New Mexico um, market, right? It's already been proven, it's been stated. And it's 100% going to happen because of the people in El Paso. So we have to realize that, guys. 21 and over, we got to protect the city. We got to get educated together. Um, it's been two years, and I really haven't heard much from any of um, city council representatives, including the mayor. Thank you, Mr. Castro. I'm very educated, you guys. Thank you, Mr. Castro. Thank You've you reached you the, the time limit. Thank you. We had a march here. It was a cannabis march. Very successful. Um, Norm and uh, Michael Custer from Legalize EP were the leaders of the march and they were, you know, advocating to the provisions of cannabis and to stop, you know, arresting people for cannabis. It was really uh, motivating and, and uh, it moved a lot of people. There was families with, you know, the children with disabilities that use uh, cannabis oil, there was veterans, there was people from all ways of life here. And then, you know, just, it was a peaceful march. And the cult organized it? I guess, El Paso, okay. El Paso Norm. Uh, and then there was other uh, activists from outside El Paso, from the Dallas area, Austin, that came and helped also with the mom.